In this videotape, we will learn how to solve absolute value equations. You'll recall the definition of the absolute value of a number. The absolute value of a number A, written like this, is equal to the distance, the absolute value of a number A, the absolute value of a number A is the distance between the number A and zero on the number line. The absolute value of a number A written like this, A with lines on either side of it, is the distance between the number A and zero on the number line. Here is a number line. The absolute value of the number 2, distance between 2 and 0 on the number line, that's of course 2 units. The absolute value of the number minus 2, the distance between minus 2 and 0 on the number line, also 2 units. Okay, the absolute value of 0 is 0. The absolute value of a number can never be negative. Okay, the absolute value of zero is zero, and for positive or negative numbers, the absolute value has to be positive. Okay, now we're interested in solving equations that involve absolute value. Let's start very simply with the absolute value of x is equal to 5. We want to solve this equation, that is, find all values of x for which this is a true statement. Okay, geometric, let's let me put the number 5 and on the number line. Geometrically, what we're saying here is that the distance between x and 0 should be 5. Okay? The distance between x and 0 should be 5, and the question is, what is x? x is 5 units away from 0. Now, x could be 5 units to the right of 0 or 5 units to the left of 0. In either case, the absolute value of x would be 5. The distance between x and 0 would be 5. So there are two possible answers. x could be either 5 or minus 5. Two possible answers. Two possible solutions for this equation. x could be either 5 or minus 5, so that the distance between x and 0 would be 5 x is 5 units away from 0, we have the possibility that it is either to the right of 0 or to the left of 0. So you have either 5 or minus 5 as a possible answer. And in general, if we have the absolute value, say, of z equal to some number a, where a is a positive number, If a is a positive number, the absolute value of z equals a, okay, can be replaced or is equivalent to the following two equations without absolute value. z equals a or z equals minus a. Okay, over here, z was x and a was 5. The absolute value of x equals 5 gives us either x equals 5 or x equals minus 5. I wrote it in terms of z because very often instead of just x, we have a function of x. Okay? We have rather some expression in x inside the absolute value symbol. Okay? And it's only when a is a positive number. We'll consider what happens when a is a negative number a little later on. Let's try to solve a more complicated uh, absolute value equation. The absolute value of 2x minus 5 is equal to 9. Okay, the absolute value of 2x minus 5 is equal to 9. Okay, an absolute value equation, an equation involving absolute values. We can match it up to this. This is the absolute value of z is equal to a. This can be replaced by two equations without absolute value, either z equals a or z equals minus a. So this one here can be replaced by this symbol, okay, means is equivalent to, can be replaced by the following two equations. Uh, 2x minus 5 equals 9, or 2x 
minus 5 is equal to minus 9. Geometrically, the distance between 2x minus 5, 2x minus 5 is after all a number. x is a number. 2 times x minus 5 is some other number. We want to figure out what it is so that the distance between 2x minus 5 and 0 would be 9. Okay, then 2x minus 5 could either be plus 9 or minus 9. It has to be 9 units away from 0 on either side of 0. Okay, so we replace this absolute value equation by these two first degree equations in x without absolute value. We solve each one separately and we get, we get two possible answers and these are the solutions to the absolute value equation. Now these are very simple absolute value equations we're working out. In general, it's a very good idea to check your absolute value equations because when we get to some more complicated ones, it is possible that when you get your solutions, you go back to the original equation, it might not check. So you should always check your absolute value equations. Okay, let's try to work this out. We have 2x minus 5 equals 9 and also 2x minus 5 equals minus 9. These are the two equations that we got without absolute value. Okay, we add 5 to both sides. 2x is equal to 14 dividing both sides by 2 gives us x equals 7. Okay, as one possible answer, we'll check that in a moment. Over here, adding 5 to both sides, 2x is equal to minus 4, dividing both sides by 2, we get x equals minus 2. Two solutions. And in general, this is, what, this is what's going to happen if we have, say, a first-degree equation, in, first-degree expression in x, and the absolute value, we have an absolute value equation, it will give rise to two equations without absolute values. Each one of these we will solve, okay, and we'll get two possible answers. Okay, now checking. To check, you go back to the original equation, which is the one with absolute value, not to one of these two. Okay, so to check, you go to the absolute value of 2x minus 5 is equal to 9. The absolute value of 2 times 7 minus 5 should be equal to 9. The absolute value of 14 minus 5 should be equal to 9. The absolute value of 9 is 9, and that checks out. 9 is equal to 9. And similarly, with x equals minus 2, you check by going back to the original equation, the absolute value of 2x minus 5 is equal to 9. We get the absolute value of 2 times minus 2 minus 5 should be equal to 9. The absolute value of minus 4 minus 5 should be equal to 9. The absolute value of minus 9 should be equal to 9, and that checks out because the absolute value of minus 9 is 9. Okay, so you get 9 equals 9, and it checks out. So both of these solutions did check out. Okay, now, this rule that I gave you here, I meant everything that I put down here. I meant that it should be exactly in this form. The absolute value of something, okay, equals some number where this is positive. Okay, it has to look exactly like that. Let me give you an example and show you how you can run into trouble with this. Let's say we're working out an example like this. The absolute value of x plus 3 minus 2 equals 4. There are so many people who ignore the rules and do the problem in the following wrong way. Okay, they know there should be two possibilities, you know, with so they go x plus 3 minus 2 is 4, and they go x plus 3 minus 2 is minus 4. Because they remember that there's supposed to be a plus value and a minus value, something like that. Okay, now this rule was written down for a reason. It has to match, the problem has to be put into this form before you can break it up into two equations. The left-hand side should be just the absolute value of something, the right-hand side equal to a positive number. Okay, so what you must do is isolate the absolute value. You cannot use this rule 
until the, ab the absolute value is isolated. This is the wrong way to do it. The right way would be the following. Move it up over here. The absolute value of x plus 3 minus 2 equals 4. We then add 2 to both sides. And we get the absolute value of x plus 3 is equal to 6. Now it looks like this. The absolute value of z equals a, where the left-hand side is just the absolute value of something. The right-hand side is a positive number. This then breaks up into x plus 3 equals 6, or x plus 3 equals minus 6. z equals a, or z equals minus a. When it's in this form, the absolute value of something equals a positive number. Okay, and you break it up and you take what's inside the absolute value sign, namely x plus 3, that's z. You set it either equal to the right-hand side or the negative of the right-hand side. And you solve these two equations separately, and you get x equals 3, or here, subtracting 3 from both sides, we get x equals minus 9. Two possible solutions. And you can check them, and to check them, you should go back to the original equation. When you, plug, when you substitute in x equals 3, the absolute value of 3 plus 3, the absolute value of 6, at 6 minus 2 gives you 4. When you substitute in minus 9, okay, you get minus 9 plus 3, that's minus 6, but the absolute value of that is plus 6, minus 2 once again gives you 4. Okay, these would not give you the correct answers. One of them wouldn't. OK. Now, it has to be exactly in this form. The absolute value should be isolated, as you saw in this example. OK. Now, supposing we're working out a problem. Like this. The absolute value of x plus 3 plus 4 equals 2. It looks similar to the one we just worked out. It's a little different. OK? You know now that you can't just jump in and solve this. You have to isolate the absolute value. So you subtract 4 from both sides. You isolate the absolute value. You get x plus 3 is equal to minus 2. Some people then jump in and say, well, I'm going to use this formula. They ignore the fact that a has to be a positive number. You can only use this formula if it's the absolute value of something equals a positive number. OK? Now, let's suppose you try to use that formula when you shouldn't. OK? This is, once again, the wrong way to do this problem. Okay, let's say you ignore the rule and you jump right in and you say, well, x plus 3 could be minus 2, or x plus 3 could be the opposite of that, which is plus 2. You can solve these equations. You'll get two answers. But neither one of them will check. We get x equals minus 5 and x equals minus 1. OK, but when you try to check, let's try to check them. OK, when you try to check them, you go back to the original equation, the absolute value of x plus 3 plus 4 equals 2, and you substitute in x equals minus 5. Absolute value of minus 5 plus 3 plus 4 should be equal to 2. The absolute value of minus 2 plus 4 should be equal to 2. 2 plus 4, that's 6, is certainly not equal to 2. It doesn't check. So x equals minus 5 is out. Now let's try to check x equals minus 1. Back in the original equation, the absolute value of minus 1 plus 3 plus 4 should be equal to 2. Minus 1 and plus 3, that's plus 2. The absolute value of plus 2 plus 4 should be equal to 2. Once again, 2 plus 4, 6, is not equal to 2. Okay, and that lets this one out.
What went wrong was that the rule that I gave you, the absolute value of z equals a, was only valid if that was a positive number. Let's think about what we're doing here. You're trying to solve this equation for x. You're looking for an x value so that when you substitute in, the absolute value of x plus 3 comes out to be minus 2. Okay, now, from the point of view of the geometry of the problem, the absolute value of a number represents the distance between the number and zero on the number line, and it can't be negative. So there's no value for x you're going to substitute in here so that the absolute value of that number is going to be negative. If a number is negative, its absolute value is positive. If it's positive, the absolute value is positive. And if it's zero, the absolute value is zero. So there's absolutely no way that the absolute value of a number is going to come out to be negative. So when you see this problem, you immediately say, no solution. You cannot find an x value for which the absolute value is going to come out to be negative here. Okay, so the rule is the absolute value of z is equal to a. This is equivalent to z equals a or z equals minus a, okay, if a is a positive number. That's the only time we use it. a has to be a positive number. Okay, if a is a negative number, there are no solutions because the absolute value of a number cannot come out to be negative. Okay, let's try one more example. This time I want to show you an example when there are absolute values on both sides of the equation. Try this. The absolute value of 3x minus 4 is equal to the absolute value of x. Okay. The absolute values of these two numbers okay, are equal. That tells me that the numbers are either the same or they're opposites. In other words, the quantities, the expressions inside the absolute value sign are either the same or they're opposites. If the distance between this number and zero is equal to the distance between this number and zero. Either the numbers are the, actual, the exact same numbers or they're on opposite sides of zero. Okay. Therefore, we can break this down into two possibilities. We can get either the numbers are the same, 3x minus 4 equals x, or the numbers are opposites. In general, if you have, say, the absolute value of x equals the absolute value of y, these can be broken down into two possibilities, either x equals y or x equals minus y. Either the quantities in the absolute value symbol are exactly the same or one is the negative of the other. Okay, so once again, the absolute value equation will break down to two equations without absolute values. The two expressions inside the absolute value are the same or they're opposites of each other. Okay, now let's work them out. On this one here, we can subtract 3x from both sides, giving minus 4 is minus 2x. Divide both sides by minus 2, giving 2 equals x as one possibility. x equals 2 is one possibility, and here, we can subtract 3x from both sides, getting minus 4 is minus 4x, dividing both sides by minus 4, 1 equals x. So we have x equals 1 and x equals 2, two possibilities, and let's check the answers. If x equals 2, we get 6 minus 4, the absolute value of that is 2. Here we have the absolute value of 2, it's also 2. Okay, so when x equals 2, the expressions inside are the same. When x equals 1, we get 3 times 1 minus 4. The absolute value of minus 1 equals the absolute value of 1, since the absolute value of minus 1 is 1, and so is the absolute value of plus 1. Okay. Okay, let's do one more example. I just want to show you that one mistake that sometimes people make with the absolute value equations. Let's try this. The absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1. 
And this comes under the absolute value of x equals the absolute value of y. So we're going to take two possibilities. Either the expressions in the absolute value symbols are the same or they're opposites. Now, with opposites, be careful. Either this is equal to this or this is the negative of this. Now, when you take the negative, since there's more than one term here, you have to be careful. You have to use parentheses. Okay, so either 2x plus 3 equals x minus 1 or 2x plus 3 is the negative of x minus 1. Now, let's solve these. Subtracting x from both sides, we get x plus 3 equals minus 1. Subtracting 3 from both sides, x equals minus 4 as one answer. And here, first you have to remember to distribute the minus sign through the parentheses. This is really like a minus 1. So you get minus 1x, minus, times, minus 1 times minus 1, that's plus 1. Minus x plus 1, adding x to both sides. 3x plus 3 is equal to 1. Subtracting 3 from both sides, 3x equals minus 2. Dividing both sides by 3, x equals minus 2 thirds. Okay, and you can go back and check both of these answers and they work out. And this brings us to the end of the tape.